Hi, it's Ash and welcome back to my channel. Whether you are a road runner or a trail runner, there is something that can make a really big difference to your comfort levels, the injury risks that you have, and that is the shoe fit. Now, how do we get the perfect shoe fit? So first up, we have the importance of the toe box. Now that's where your toes will sit. And it's really important part of the shoe because a proper toe box allows your toes to splay or spread out naturally and sometimes up to 15% their width as, as our foot comes into contact as we run with the floor. So this is super important because your toes need that room to move. So they need to be able to flex and, and grip and sort of push off the ground as, as you hit and connect to the floor. They need to absorb the, the impact of, of the foot landing, but then also, and again, use that movement energy, energy to spring off. Now, if the toe box is too narrow or tight, your toes can get cramped together and this can lead to blisters and calluses or it could lead to more serious injuries like bunions or hammer toes. So when you're trying on your shoes, try them on with your socks that you would run in and try and make sure that there's enough room in the toe box for you to wiggle your toes freely. You should be able to spread them out and you should be able to feel a little bit of space around each toe. Generally, you go for a, at least one size up on your running shoe than your normal shoe. And as you can see from, from this here, even with my wide toe box on, on these minimalist shoes that are celebrated wide toe box, my, my toes are still hitting the edge of them. So this is also a great, a great uh, test that you can do is by standing on top of the feet, spread your toes out and see how wide the toe box area is. So the next area would be having a look at getting a shoe that is a zero drop shoe. Now more and more runners are turning into a zero dropped shoe because of the natural uh, functioning of the Achilles and the calf muscle. You, will, you put the, the Achilles muscle, uh, the Achilles tendon and the uh, calf muscle in a much more natural position. If we've got a, an elevated heel, like a lot of cushioned running trainers do have, then we are effectively keeping the Achilles and the calf in a slightly shortened state, which if you're starting to run uphill on an undulating surface, you're having to lengthen it that little bit longer. And if you've got tight calves or Achilles, then you could be putting excessive strain on that area. It's also important to note that if you are regularly wearing a heel, elevated heel shoe and you're used to wearing that, it will take a period of transition to get from an elevated heel to a zero drop shoe. So the way that you can do that is just start by day to day wear, wearing your zero drops until your feet, so your calves and your Achilles area specifically have, have transitioned and feel comfortable with that new zero drop shoe. So the purpose of a zero drop would be to put that Again, put the Achilles heel and the calf muscle back into more of a natural position, which will reduce the risk of loading that Achilles and that calf muscle with, with the excessive stress, especially if we're we say, running up a hill, as I've mentioned. So the midfoot area of the shoe is a really important area and runners often get this area wrong and cause a lot of issues with their metatarsals. You want to find a snug fit, but not excessively tight to the point where you may be even strangling those metatarsals and causing the, the worst case uh, uh, issues uh, such as stress fractures in those metatarsals. But absolutely, you can still, still strangle that area and cause issues in the nerves. You can pinch nerves in there. You can limit the uh, ability of the foot to absorb impact and, and use that sh shock absorber that the foot is, that natural shock absorber. So if your foot is too tight in that area, if you're, if you're really tightening your lace, the lace is too tightly in that area, you could be increasing your pain and even potentially getting numb feet. So that's a red flag. If you're getting numb feet or injuries in that area, then your, your, your midfoot area is way too tight. Now we need to loosen that a little bit to the point where you maybe could get your little finger, just slide it down really snugly just in, uh, in between that gap between the laces and the top of the midfoot. So the heel fit, again, it's another area that maybe some runners get too restricted and too secure. You want it secure and you want it snug again, but you don't want it to the point that it rubs on that Achilles area and it causes discomfort and blisters and calluses and starts to bleed. If at any point you are getting 
you are getting bleeding, blisters uh, and uh, severe issues like that where your toes are starting to bleed or your foot's starting to bleed and you're getting uh, really harsh blisters, then that's a good indication that your feet, that your shoes are too tight. We should absolutely not be getting blisters anywhere on our feet. When you're trying on your shoes, make sure that your heel feels nicely snug, it doesn't feel too tight. Have a little walk, maybe even a run around in those shoes if you're in a shop and just make sure again that it doesn't rub and you don't feel that rubbing that's gonna create again issues if you're going out for your long runs and you start to wear them, it's gonna cause blisters and again that's a, a really big red flag as an indication that, that, that the heel area is you've, you've worn them too you're wearing them too tightly so as you may have seen in the barefoot minimalist uh, video that i did i'm an, uh, a, 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 a strong passionate lover of flexible shoes because they allow the, the foot to function naturally i personally love the feel of, of you can actually feel your foot on the ground you can feel your, your toes flexing you can feel how how much how hard the contact is so i'm a really big uh, a big proponent of flexible shoes now i know that there's obviously there's some people that like the cushioning so you've got to find the the the, the, the blend and the magic blend between that flexible shoe and so that you're allowing the foot to again function as much as possible but also with the right amount of cushioning for use so someone has prefer a plush cushioned feet feels for that shock absorption while others might feel that more minimal shoe to feel the ground and have that better control within the feet so there's no right or wrong really here it's all about finding what works and feels best for you so when testing flexibility just move the shoe around and have a little bit of a feel of it see how much natural uh, flexibility it has and how much it will allow your foot to flex in that shoe as well the more restrictive that shoe is then the, the, the likely it's gonna cause a lot of issues in that foot area that then might lead up to the body because the body is a closed chain system. I'm not a fan of carbon plated shoes because it creates a lever that then you, it has a, an energy return that goes through the body and what the, the, the science around the, the carbon plated shoes have shown us is that it causes an increase in, in, the, in the forces that go through the body and you've got to be able to have the muscles and the feet muscles strong enough to control those excessive forces because you get a return as, as the carbon plate hits the floor and it springs, you get a return that goes through the foot into the body so your body needs to be extra strong to cope with that energy return that you get back from the carbon plate. So for recreational runners, I, I just don't think carbon plated shoes are worth it personally so there you have it those key points you've got to look out for the toe box make sure that you're you've got the right fit and you're maybe just going one size up in your running shoe compared to your normal day-to-day -day shoes we're going to have a look at making sure that we can again not strangle that midfoot area we don't want to really compress that area we want that area to to function properly we don't want the heel to be too locked in again we don't want to cause issues there and we also again maybe having a look at that more natural angle for the calf and the achilles with the zero drop shoe and then finally having a look at how do we find the balance between flexibility and whether we prefer some cushioning or not so again there's lots of things to look out for there make sure you again you, you do try different pairs on your shop around have a look at different brands try them on as much as possible so it's a really good idea to maybe go to your local running shoe shop so that you can try on different pairs and try not to get swayed by the people in the shop because they will be trying to get you to buy a certain pair of shoe so I hope that was helpful and remember that if you are getting blisters or if you are starting to get uh, bunions which again if, if you're wearing shoes that are too tight and I know there's, there's one brand in particular that has caused my hammer toes and caused my issues in my toes personally that I used to wear. Uh, that shoe company, if and you can see them, it, the, the shoes are kind of slightly pointed like this, they're a very big brand. Those, ish, those, those shoes are going to cause bunions and hammer toes like they have done. I'm talking from personal experience. So make sure you try and avoid those shoes because, like I say, they are going to cause issues up the body. They did for me. They caused issue with my left knee, and left hip, left lower back until I realized that that's what they were doing. I'm now trying to correct them still maybe 
six, seven, eight years later. So when you get the perfect shoe, you will feel like the shoe's not even there. Should, that's how it should feel. It should feel like you don't even really notice that there. It feels like your foot is just in a really nice supported shoe. It's just, it should just feel very comfortable. So I hope you liked this video. If you just give it a thumbs up and put thanks for the video in the comments, I do greatly appreciate your support and I shall see you in the next video.